In this video I'm going to be talking about wedge filters. These are linear accelerator accessories designed to alter the intensity of a beam in order to produce a more uniform dose distribution inside a patient. A normal photon beam will produce a relatively flat dose distribution in a flat phantom. A phantom is something that we can use to simulate a patient during irradiation. We use them for research, equipment commissioning and quality assurance. They're generally made of materials that are similar to human tissue in how they interact with radiation. Our go-to patient substitute is water. A flat distribution like this is great if we want to cover a target evenly, but they only wind up flat when the area of the patient that we're irradiating is flat, which is often not the case in clinical practice. Sometimes it's to our advantage to use a wedge filter to reduce the intensity of the beam across its axis. Putting a wedge-shaped filter in the beam means that different parts of the beam have to pass through different thicknesses of material before reaching the patient and are attenuated to different degrees. In a flat phantom like this, this results in an angled dose distribution. We can create dose distributions at different angles, normally 60, 45, 30, and 15 degrees in clinical practice. These angles are defined as the angle between the dose distribution on the central axis and the horizontal plane in a profile measured at depth in a flat phantom, normally at a depth of 10 centimeters. This is useful because if we irradiate a part of a patient that isn't flat, our dose distribution is not going to be flat either. Photons that reach this depth on this side of the patient are going to travel through less tissue than ones that reach this depth on this side of the patient, so they'll be attenuated less, and the dose on this side will be higher. But if we put a wedge filter in the way, it will attenuate the beam more on this side and reduce the dose. This can be used to balance out the effects of the angled surface and produce a flat dose distribution. Textbooks will often call this compensating for missing tissue. They just mean this part here that stops the surface from being flat. As I said, this can help to deliver a more uniform dose distribution and remove any hotspots that we might have inside our patient. Hotspots being areas that are receiving more dose than we would like, which can be much more prone to treatment side effects. The type of wedge filter that I just described is called a hard wedge. It's a wedge-shaped lump of metal, so it's thicker on one side than the other. It can be placed on a LINAC accessory mount, just below the window through which the beam exits the treatment head. It works by attenuating parts of the beam that pass through the thicker side more than those that pass through the thinner side. These have to be inserted manually, and the same wedge is often not required for every beam in a patient treatment. So it requires a lot of trips in and out of a treatment room during delivery, which can extend treatment times. And because these wedges are quite heavy, being made of thick pieces of metal, they can pose an occupational health and safety risk both to staff and patients. Also, because we're passing the beam through an additional layer of filtration, it does reduce the dose rate too. And whenever we pass a beam through a filter, it affects the energy spectrum. Because some parts of the beam pass through thicker pieces of the filter than others, different parts of the beam are hardened to different degrees. In this case, a longer path through the metal filter results in more hardening so the beam winds up with a higher energy on one side than the other. These days we don't have to use hard wedges, although they are the most straightforward approach. We can also make use of dynamic wedges, which produce angled dose distributions via moving a filter through the beam. In order to keep setup time and OHS risks to a minimum, it's desirable to use a wedge that you can control from outside of the room. The two major LINAC manufacturers, Electa and Varian, take different approaches to remotely controlled beam wedging. Electa use a motorized wedge, it's a large angle hard wedge that sits inside the LINAC treatment head just above the secondary collimator jaws. It can be moved remotely in and out of the beam at will. The actual physical wedge only has one angle, about 60 degrees, which is the largest that you'd normally see in clinical practice. But this can be used to create different wedge angles by delivering part of the beam without the wedge in the beam, and part of the beam with the wedge in the beam. Say we want to deliver 10 gray to the center of the beam. If we want to use a 60 degree wedge angle, we deliver the entire field with a wedge in place you wind up with a much higher dose on one side of the beam than in the center. Let's just say for argument's sake at the moment that this is 20 gray, so twice as much as in the beam center. If we want to deliver 10 gray to the center of the beam still, but with a shallower wedge angle, we can deliver part of the beam with the wedge in place first, and the remainder of the beam without the wedge in place. If we deliver 5 of this 10 gray to the center using a wedge field, you see that the wedge angle is still quite steep. If we deliver another 5 gray with a wedge out of the field and add these two doses together, in the center we still get 10 gray, but assuming that the wedge field still delivers twice as much dose to the high side of the field as it does to the center, when we add these two fields together, on the high side of the total field, we get a total of 15 gray instead of 20 gray. So by delivering part of this dose as an open field, the ratio of the highest dose in the field to the dose in the center has decreased. With the wedge alone, it was 2 to 1, and with half the beam being delivered as an open field, it's now 3 to 2. So we can adjust the wedge angle by adjusting the ratio of beam that we deliver with the wedge in and with the wedge out. A greater proportion of the beam delivered with the wedge in place means a steeper wedge angle. Varian have already added an MLC to their treatment head, 
so they don't have any room left for an extra component. So instead of adding a motorized wedge, they create wedged fields by moving the secondary collimator jaw through the beam while it's still on. This is known as dynamic wedging. There are a couple of different ways to approach dynamic wedging. One is to move the jaw through the beam at different speeds to create different wedge angles, but this isn't the approach that Varian are currently using. They use something called an enhanced dynamic wedge, or EDW. This is quite similar in approach to the motorized wedge, in that they use a single jaw speed, so a single wedge angle, delivered in combination with an open beam in order to generate different beam angles. Because we're not passing the beam through a filter, it doesn't result in beam hardening, so it doesn't affect the spectrum of the beam. And just like the Electromotorized Wedge, it can be controlled from outside the treatment room, allowing for faster treatment times. 